Dr. Fies to be your commencement speaker. I still oppose on principle the idea of any commencement speech. I believe that it is a doomed form, cloying and impossible. Commencement speakers give stock advice which is then promptly ignored. The central mission of the commencement speech is in itself ridiculous to inspire at a moment which needs no inspiration. Look at yourselves at this moment. Something incredible is happening to you right now. The whole world is opening to you. You guys have been in school your entire lives, and you have completed something difficult that took persistence and willfulness. Probably you questioned yourselves again and again, and now you're off to face the world and do everything you have been dreaming. What can words add to that except delay the moment you get your diploma? And I said yes only because of my personal connection to this school. One is your president, Sandy Unger, who I worked closely with at NPR years ago, who, as many of you know, has a special gift for convincing people to do things they do not necessarily want to do. Another personal connection I have to Goucher is my grandma Frida, is my dad's mom, Frida Freelander, Goucher, class of 31. Uh, a very defiantly proud Goucher grad. Are there members of Phi Beta Kappa here? Can I hear Phi Beta Kappa? You are my grandma's sister in that organization. I'm wearing her Phi Beta Kappa key. Grandma Frieda wore her key to any special dinner or occasion until she died and was not shy about talking about being a member of Phi Beta Kappa with anyone who would listen, which makes her seem like some wacky grandma, old lady, but she was actually anything but. She was smart and funny and, and awake to the world. Um, and I loved her enough that although I oppose the form of graduation speech, I am standing here in front of you because I know it would please her a great deal. My third connection to Goucher, I really was not going to talk about it all. And this week, my wife and some friends insisted that you graduates would find it relevant. And that is that I lost my virginity in one of the dorms here. Not recently. I've been thinking about uh, what, what would have been useful to me uh, to hear on the day I left college. And and, and I wish that somebody had said to me that it's normal to feel uh, lost for a little while. You know, you get out of school and you have this, this great and very expensive education and you are a rocket ready to launch and it is not clear where you should be pointed or even how to get off the ground. So I was working at a network news show, uh, all things considered, at the age of 20. And, uh, and I, even I floundered, I floundered badly. I had one skill uh, as, as a person in my 20s and that is that just for whatever reason, I was, an, I was a good editor. I was a very decent editor from the start. But all the other, um, all the other things that, that make me decent at my job now, uh, how to make a story, how to structure a story, how to find a story, how to report. I was a terrible, terrible writer. I was the kind of writer who writes a paragraph and then looks at it and thinks like, oh no, I'm gonna move all the words around and then rewrites it over and over again. Um, I spent years in my 20s doing mediocre stories that should have taken days, but in fact took me months. I spent years wondering if I should just learn to become a journalist by going to journalism school, by going to grad school. Instead, and this is just a little practical tip, I simply decided, and this is totally, I don't know why people don't talk about this, I simply would take NPR reporters and pay them 50 bucks to look at scripts I was working on, which was much cheaper than grad school. Um, and, and as a performer on the air, I was a complete stiff. And I want to say that this is not some sort of weird, false modesty, like I was bad. There are, there's proof of this on the internet. Um, Google, and you'll see it. I made, I made very little money. My personal financial goal was your age times 1,000, which I did not achieve until I was into my 30s. My parents, throughout my 20s when I was working in public radio, they completely opposed everything that I was doing working in public broadcasting. Somehow, my parents are the only Jews in America who do not listen to public radio. I 
had my own national radio show. I had been on David Letterman. There had been a New York Times Magazine article about me before they stopped suggesting medical school was still an option. I think one of the most difficult things for any parent is to readjust their idea of what their kids should be to what the kids want to be. And, and I think when you're the kid in that situation, it's really easy to be glib and want your parents to just catch up to who you're turning yourself into. When I was in my 20s, things were said between us that um, my mom passed away for a few years ago uh, of cancer, and there are things that I said in my 20s. I mean, we made up well before then, but there are things that I said to her and to both my parents in my 20s that I still regret as we fighted over what, as we fought over what I was doing. And I would just say to you guys, um, as your parents catch up to you, as your parents catch up to you, don't be a dick. <laughs>